Hello and welcome to my channel where we live, love, learn and laugh. Karibuni sana. Okay, gidi kidanyo it is. I'm telling you leo nasikia tu yani nimekuja na ubaya ah ya Mungu tu ndani yangu. <laughs> Let me see that. Anyway, um so today I actually want to have a discussion about does God exist? You know, this is a continuation video from the one that I previously did about faith, you know, the importance of faith. And um yeah, so does God exist? You know, sometimes you can find yourself in um in a certain situation where it doesn't matter how strong um your faith is. Your faith in Christ can get shaken because sometimes um, we go through certain situations in our lives that come like a storm and a flood, you know, <laughs> they come so hard. They, and if you're not, um, deeply rooted in the word of the Lord and also you yourself, if you don't know and understand yourself, um, some of those storms, they can take you out, you know, they can take you out of the grace of God and they can also take you out of the favor of God. But in the same breath, um, nothing happens by coincidence. I don't believe that as a Christian and somebody who believes in the Lord that um, certain things happen just coincidentally. No, because even the Bible says that before we were born, the Lord ordains our steps on this earth. He knows you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. So he knows, he knows your life, you know, and um, he cannot allow you to be in a certain situation which already he does not have a victorious end for you as long as you continue holding on to your faith you continue believing in him you continue trusting in him and continue trusting in the process as well as learning from the process because sometimes we have to go through certain situations in order to learn something that is going to benefit us or is actually going to be a door you know, in life, we say we need keys, you know, you need a key to open a certain door, whether it's a door of success, a door of marriage, a door of um, having children, you know, a door of um, wealth, a door of favor, you know, whatever it is that you're seeking in life and you're trusting and believing in God for, there are certain doors that we need keys to open. And those keys are not physical keys, you know, like the way you have your car key, when you want to get in your car, you just take your car key fungua, drive, go, you know, or you want to get into your house, your mailbox, or whatever uh, else it is that you need a key. These are spiritual keys, and spiritual keys can only be, um, I mean, spiritual doors can only be through grace or favor, or even other means, you know, but at the end of the day, you are not happy, and why aren't you, uh, why aren't you happy? You're not happy because you're not living in your purpose. You're not fulfilling your purpose on earth. And I did do a video um, uh, some time back, about a month or two ago, about finding your purpose. Um, you know, if you're not quite uh, understanding where I'm coming with this, feel free to um, look it up in my channel and uh, watch it. So at least you can know where I'm coming from with this idea of um, um, living out your purpose. So going back to my question initially was, does God exist? Yes, he does. God does exist. Um, he, he makes sense of the historical facts concerning life, death, and resurrection. You know, the Lord, like I said, the Lord knows your beginning from your end. And it doesn't matter what kind of um, predicament you're in. Like before I came on, I was actually thinking about the story of Hannah and Penina. I don't know why. For the last um, couple of weeks, I've really been, you know, I've been reminded very often of the story of Hannah and Penina. And um, if you read the Bible, then of course you know uh, Penina and Hannah were both married by the same man, uh, Elkanah. And uh, Penina 
was very fruitful you know she could have kids and uh hannah struggled with having kids and out of that you know her, uh, penina used to mock hannah all the time you know like hey you know look at me i you know i have my kids you know each year you know she was just producing 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 but hannah was not producing anything you know she was not bearing any kids and that really troubled hannah and she used to pray a lot and ask God, you know, if you can just bless me with one son, you know, uh, in the marriage to Elikana because she could not produce. And out of that, the Bible says that the more Penina kept provoking Hannah, the more Hannah kept crying out to the Lord. And it, 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 it took a process before finally she did receive her blessing. Because as we all know, in the end, Hannah did eventually have a son whom she named uh, Samuel. And uh, on top of that, she also had five more kids, you know. So her blessing, her door opened. But that door that she needed to open in order to access uh, her blessing, which was the, the fruit of her son, Samuel, and, you know, which also came along with five others, it was through the provocation of Penina. You know, Penina had to keep pushing her to a corner, to a place where she could not eat, she could not drink, you know, to a place where she felt like she was just going to give up and who knows, probably even commit suicide or just throw in the towel and say, that's it, I'm done. Sometimes God has to take us through certain situations in order for us to get in line with the purpose that he has over our lives. And he is the only one who can actually uh, make sense out of everything that does not make sense. You know, in that point of confusion, just like um, the story of Job, which is what the song goes, uh, goes on ahead to um, speak about. You know, Job was also a guy who was a very wealthy man. And uh, he reached a certain point where, you know, he gave everything. I mean, I believe he probably gave his life to Christ or something of the sort. And um, when he did, he lost everything, you know, he lost his children, he lost his businesses, he lost his wealth. And even at some point he was tested uh, with his own health, you know, to a point where even his wife told him, you need to cast this God of yours, you know, how can you put your trust in a man who shames you like this, you know? What kind of God is this? What kind of gospel is this? You know, you surrender your life to, to someone to elevate you to a better, uh, a better place, and then you end up even worse than you started, you know. But even with that, Job remained a faithful man. And in the end, everything that he lost, the Lord paid him back. And he paid him back double. Why? Because Job was not, I believe from my own understanding of the story of Job, he was not in line according to the purpose of God, you know. There was a, there was a, a certain crooked way or crooked path in his life that needed realignment in order for him to be able to access his grace, to access his favor. And that was not going to come by Job remaining the same way that he was when he made the decision to fully dedicate his life to Christ. So it's only the Almighty God who can make sense out of life, death, and resurrection. And I will be discussing more about that in another video where I will be speaking about spiritualism as a continuation of faith or rather the importance of faith because I, I do remember I did not finish um, explaining that. But yes, the Lord does exist and he is the only one who carries the key to your destiny. He is the only one who knows your beginning from your end. And um, also in, a, in about two, three or, or three videos before, I spoke about destiny killers, you know, destiny killers and dream catchers are people who pursue our destinies. And sometimes these people are the ones who are closest to us. Like in the story of Job, it is safe to say that his wife was a dream killer, you know, because there was Job struggling with his faith, believing in God for a new beginning, a new chance. And there was his wife telling him or rather encouraging him to give up on the Lord. You know, that is how also a destiny killer or a dream catcher can operate in your life and so it is also important to believe and uh, in God to grace you with the spirit of discernment you know what is the spirit of discernment it is the supernatural ability to judge good or evil by telling them apart you know the, it is the ability to see or know what um 
what spirit is operating in a person, place, or thing. You know, sometimes um, we fail to reach our destinies and we become discouraged and give up on the Lord and even give up on believing of his existence because of lack of having a spirit of discernment. You know, what spirit is... Um, is surrounding you you know are you surrounded by encouragers or are you surrounded by discouragers who might be um, presenting themselves as encouragers but really they are dream killers in your life you know there are people who are walking with you in the journey but you're not headed in the same direction some of them want you to lose your way so that they can take your place in your destiny and so it's important for you to always pray to, Lord, to the Lord to grace you or to grant you the spirit of discernment. You know, the ability to tell good from evil and the ability also to have a sound mind. You know, to when you're making decisions, you don't make decisions out of what you can see. You don't make certain decisions out of what is surrounding you. You make um, decisions based on the guidance of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes you can give up right when the Lord is about to show up in your life. You know, and like I said, sometimes you ha you can go through a lot of disappointments before you actually uh, break through or break free into your blessing. And always remember, the bigger your destiny is, the more the battle is. Because sometimes you can be born into a family or into a situation where somebody else is already living your life, you know. Um... Your birthright was already taken away from you, probably even before you were born. And so you came into a world living a life that does not belong to you. Just like the story of Jacob and Esau, you know, exchanging of blessings. So you find that you have been living a life that's not yours. But once you awaken to it, by the time you now get to where you are supposed to be, it's a process. Because whoever is holding on to your life, whoever is holding on to your destiny, is not ready to let go. They are going to fight back. And like I said, sometimes it is people who are closest to you. They are closest to you because they are, they are monitoring you. And they are monitoring you while looking for a distraction or creating a distraction in order for them to capture or get a hold of where they know you are supposed to be. So that now you can forever remain in that position of not knowing who you are, not knowing what your purpose is, and not even knowing your identity. So it is always good, whether it's in your day-to-day -day life or in ministry or in any other aspect of your life, to pray for the spirit of discernment so that you can let the Lord guide you and lead you to the right door and to the right people. Okay. Um, and to add, uh, I would say the existence of God can be categorized metaphysically, logically, empirically, subjectively, or scientifically but truth does remain the Lord does exist stand firm and hold on to your faith the question is who is he you know to me I don't believe it's more of an issue of does God exist or not it's a question of who is he you know because God operates in the spiritual realm but I believe that even physically we are supposed to know who God is we are supposed to see him in person, you know. And so for me, I think the biggest question that I have um, concerning his existence or not is who is God? Because my prayer or my dream one day is to see the Lord in the land of the living, not dead. I'm not waiting to meet God in spirit. My prayer is to meet God in person. <laughs> Dreams are valid. <laughs> if Diana B <laughs> can rap. Jerry can meet the Lord in person. Amen. So, um, uh, <clears throat> his identity is what makes his existence mythical in the popular culture. All right. And um, let me just explain a bit. Metaphysically is theoretically, you know, where you, you think uh, based on theory and um, logically is being reasonable. You know, how do you reason his existence? Uh, metaphysically, how do you theorize his existence? And um, empirically is facts. You know, what facts can you have or what facts can you present to prove that the Lord exists? And then um, subjectively 
is just basically your individual opinion of him you know how do you view his existence and um scientifically of course it's systematically or methodically um i think i'm going to touch more on that when i do the the video about spiritualism because um i feel like those are all you know they're just basically are uh, different ways of defining the existence of god so to me it's more of a question of whether do you believe he exists or do you believe he doesn't exist and either or which which way are you proving um your belief you know is it metaphysically is it logically is it em uh, empirically is it subjectively or is it scientifically like you know you're living in a some type of fictional world you know but um let me not get so much into that because i can see my time is gone so definitely when i do speak about spiritualism i am going to touch more on um all the categories that you can define his existence it's a question of whether you believe he exists or he doesn't exist and what category do you base your belief on all right so as i close i would like to say all in all, you find grace by doing the right thing without expecting a reward. In everything that you do, in every circumstance that you are, if it's praising the Lord, praise the Lord, believe in Him, trust in Him, knowing that um, you're doing it because it is something that you desire to do. If you're going to seek salvation, pursue salvation, and also begin to believe in the existence of the Lord, do it without expecting a reward. Usiokoke ndi utajirike. Usiokoke ndi ujulikani. You know, don't be that person who does things out of basically what you're going to get out of them. Do it because it is coming from your heart. Do it because it is something that you believe in. And in doing so, because nothing in the Lord goes unrewarded, you are going to find grace. You are going to receive favor by doing the right thing. Not necessarily based on you're doing it so that you can receive a reward. All right, because sometimes, yes, you can receive a reward, but you can receive a reward that is going to destroy you instead of build you or elevate you to where um, you are intended to be, which is a door of eternal prosperity, you know, eternal grace, eternal favor. You will not have to struggle um, like the seeds of Adam in order for you to sustain whatever grace or whatever favor that you have upon your life all right so i'm going to end this video here and i will definitely see you in the next one but until then always remember that you are braver than you believe stronger than you think smarter than you feel or think and loved more than you know all right until next time Mwah!